Hello and welcome to another Let's Talk. Um, this one is going to be me reading a letter that I wrote um, as a submission to the uh, Cecil Rhodes Inquiry, currently taking place at the Oriel College, at, uh, which is part of uh, Oxford University, I think. Um, this is an inquiry which is looking into whether or not to remove the statue of Cecil Rhodes that exists at the college campus. Uh, and I wrote a, a letter to them to give my input and my thoughts on the issue because there really has been attempts to take down statues they no longer think are appropriate and there's really been very little defense <laughs> of any of this stuff uh, as as having historical value and significance so i'm going to read the letter that i wrote uh, hopefully it kind of says everything um it's about a page and a half dear sir or madam in either order with no offense intended if neither suits you I am writing to put forth my input on the issue of the maintenance of the Cecil Rhodes statue at Oriel College, as well as to the survival of monuments around the country. We stand right now in a single, frozen sliver of time. We are here as a result of the actions of our forebears, some of whom are preserved for memory in statues, but mostly are all but forgotten. For better or worse, our history is why we are where we are today. It is vital that we preserve our past in order that we and all future persons may understand how we came to be. Not only so we can take a glancing look at the pre-processed, sorted and filed, approved and universal rated version of our past, but that we are able to view it plainly and directly as possible in order to be able to generate an understanding relevant to our own contemporary lives. This is not an inquiry as to whether or not we should raise a new statue to Cecil Rhodes, Doing so now would suggest he is someone with specifically brilliant qualities over all other subjects of the UK, which I could understand being a debatable suggestion. When a previous government wanted to erect a monument of Margaret Thatcher, there was rightly a debate that she was undoubtedly a conflicting leader within living memory. This, however, is not the type of discussion we are having. This is a question of whether or not we should revise history itself, both the impact of Cecil Rhodes on our nation's history, but also his subsequent celebration. For the initial raising of the statue over 100 years ago is also now history. Generations of people have lived through the statue's existence. It is not, to many, a place of worship where they praise Cecil for his entrepreneurial exploits of foreign lands. It is a piece of decorative stone under which many of the community over a 100 years have walked. That is something they have shared, regardless of their personal backgrounds. Many, I'm sure, have inquired into who the figure is, why he is there, and what was his impact. These are unifying behaviours. History is left to be debated and provide context to everyone walking these British Isles. Whether you like it or not, and whether for better or worse, you are living with the contributions of all who have come before. If you erase their identity, you are not erasing their contributions, only shying away from the source. Furthermore, you are destroying the ability for every future generation to share in that history, to partake in the debate themselves, and see its relevance to their own lives, and, through this, you are creating generations of untold, unintended ignorance. The question of statues is also not either-or. New statues of modern heroes can and should be erected. Cecil Rhodes can stand next to a modern activist, innovator or revolutionary, which would create a display more fully encompassing our history. That is surely the ultimate point of monuments, to scroll our names in time. It is up to those of the future how they decide to interpret our mad writings. No doubt whoever you place on a podium today will be reviled a century from now, for some insane practice our successors read about in the digestible headlines and paraphrased articles of the future. It is an act of incredible arrogance that we right here, right now, think we can make the final judgement on history. That it is in the year 2020 that we should decide who is worthy of stone sculptures and who is not. Which ones should we smash to gravel? and which ones should we save? At a time when everything previous generations thought was terra firma has become terrifying, we desire more than ever to unite on common ground. The one thing that has any easily quantifiable definition and impact on all of our lives is history. Anyone who ever sets foot on British soil is the beneficiary of the deeds of our past. Whether you like it or not, colonial exploits helped enrich this country and your life. Whether you like it or not, it helped great minds forge the future we presently enjoy. Postal services, trains, telephones, computers, the internet. It even likely enabled us to survive two world wars, the second of which we should be particularly grateful for. 
There are, of course, also many millions who died anonymously, without celebration or infamy. That is not to say it was worth it, or I'd do it again, but to say it is the case. The choice of reaction is left to us because they have been preserved in stone forever. We must also wonder, if this kind of revolutionary process continues, what is the end? With the demolition of Buckingham Palace and Westminster? They could certainly be seen with negativity regardless of their architectural beauty or historical significance. Is that what we want? For those who suggest it won't go that far, then why not? If it is right to cleanse our lands of whatever speck of history presently shameful, then why shouldn't it continue? Thoroughly and absolutely. Such attempts to change our view of history are dangerous and truly Orwellian. 1984, a common read for university goers, highlights exactly the results of revisionism, that people who do not know their historical context can be easily manipulated. It is through an ever-expanding awareness of both the great and the evil that we can grow into a richer, more compassionate society. And our statues often boldly embody both for public benefit. We should leave the same to our children. Thank you for your time, and I hope the inquiry leads to a satisfying outcome for all, now and forever.